Oh my god, BMW has just redefined an SUV as an SAV. What's an SAV? Watch and find out. I'm Alan Jervis, and this is the BMW X3. There's four in this particular range. There's three four-cylinder engines and a six-cylinder engine. Two petrol and two diesel. And this X3 is the 30i X-Line. Because I've got the memory of a fruit fly, I'm going to read some of the specs. It's a $75,900 car. But with a couple of little extras, that price has gone up to $87,130. The 8-speed Sport Automatic drives the rear wheels and the front wheels. This is an all-wheel drive. The four-cylinder engine is 185 kilowatts and 350 newton meters. That's what six cylinders used to pump out with great difficulty. The combined fuel consumption figure is 7.6 litres per 100 kilometres with 174 grams per kilometre of CO2. It might surprise you to learn that this will do 0 to 106.3 seconds. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary for a four-cylinder engine pulling a relatively big car. With the key in your bag, you can kick to open the tailgate. and kick to close it. Not always the first time. We can start with this excellent 360 degree camera. Now what that's brought up is the gesture control. More about that later. What that 360 degree camera allows you to do is select which view you would like. Rear, side, other side, front, and that's looking from kind of towards the car. It's just amazing. This car also has automated parking. The main thing to note about an X3 is that it is just like a 3 Series to drive. It is as smooth and as quiet, especially the quiet bit, but admittedly, many of the things I really like about this car are optional extras. But I think the optional extra is worth considering. The 360 degree camera and automatic parking, for example, are amazing. The other things that are amazing are the lane control, which of course is active. So you activate the little steering wheel button uh, with the steering wheel symbol and the BMW will then actively steer you in the lane and it's particularly handy with the Q function on the cruise control. The cruise control obviously is active and the Q function will stop and go in traffic. Some of the other really cool things this car has is traffic sign recognition and it is clever enough to recognise LED signs which many traffic recognition systems don't do. There's a fully digital dashboard which I really like but as I've commented on BMWs before this one has little bezels around each of the dials so it kind of falls over at the last hurdle. Fabulous as it is, you can't reconfigure this any other way, so it's fully digital, it's a full LCD, but unfortunately it is stuck in that mode. It'd be much easier if it wasn't. Then we come to the centre stack. That centre LCD has the most amazing resolution, it is crystal clear, crystal clear. And the thing that I like about it is that because it's touch control, you don't really have to worry so much about the iDrive controller, which is down between the front seats. You can still use it if you want, and in some models it's got a little scratch pad on top, like a track pad. It is truly an astounding car. It's looking around you at all times to see, no, 
just then it was steering me back into the, what it thought was the middle of the lane even though it was perhaps not quite where I wanted to be but I'll let the BMW do it for me. Oh, now, the other thing that it did just before was it brought up the fact that there was a traffic incident 0.9 of a kilometre ahead and asked me if I wanted to avoid it. Now, I didn't even have the sat nav on. I didn't know it could do that, but there you go. We're now doing exactly 80 kilometres an hour and this is as quiet as a ghost. It, it is so quiet. You sit very high up because this is a sports activity vehicle. Sports activity vehicle, please note. BMW have redesigned the name. There's various drive modes, but they're not off-road modes. So you have comfort, sport, and super sport. One of them is configurable, so you can configure the steering and suspension and transmission exactly as you want them. It's an eight-speed transmission, of course. Please note, automatic, not any of that dual clutch nonsense. It is incredibly smooth. There are a range of engines in X3, two four-cylinder turbos, and a four-cylinder diesel turbo, and a six-cylinder diesel turbo. The need for diesel now has largely gone away because of the efficiency of small four-cylinder turbo petrol engines. Once upon a time with BMW, you knew what car you were driving by the badge on the back. So if it said 3 Series 330i, it was a 3-litre straight-six engine, non-turbo. Now you don't know what you're driving, you've got to look up the specs. So this particular X3 is a 30i, and it's an X-Line. Now I'm just going to activate the cruise control. Now this is now keeping me a set distance from that car in front, and I can change the distance with this bottom button on the steering wheel. I love the way this car is laid out. I think the interior is just delicious. And not only is the interior luxurious, but it is incredibly comfortable. It's a sports activity vehicle, so the kind of person who's going to use it is the kind of person who would once have bought a 3 Series. So it won't be the sort of person that wants to pull a horse float or, a, or probably anything else for that matter. You could pull a small trailer if you wanted to, but I'm not sure why you'd want to get somebody else to do it. I'm going to rate X3 at 8.5 out of 10. And the reason that it lost a few points is that it doesn't have CarPlay as standard. Yes, this superb stereo, which by the way has been upgraded, sounds extraordinary. It is just brilliant. And it does have digital radio, which of course is an option. And it loses another point because there are so many options and they're really expensive options too. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth ticking some boxes? Yes, it is. I, I love this wood grain and in the sun, it really sparkles. Wood grain got a bad rap because so much of it was plastic, but this is the real deal. Most of the time, the ride on these 20 inch wheels is pretty good, but for the times when you encounter a an imperfection in the road, it's, it really clunks in the cabin. Now remember, BMWs run on run flats. So in summary, you have an activity vehicle that you could use every day. It is an everyday driver. The steering is sharp, the brakes are precise, the ride is superb most of the time, the interior is delicious. I like the fancy headlights with their adaptive high beam. There really isn't anything to complain about. If you ticked all those boxes, you're going to get a car that is top of the line. And as always, hit the little round symbol and subscribe, wherever that is on the screen.